Well, good, good morning. It's a bit chilly here in Toowoomba this morning. We're continuing on the study of the commentary on the book of Jeremiah. Today is chapter 16. And the topic today says that the prophet will predict the utter ruin of the Jews. Really a sad thing for the prophet to have to do. This is coming up to the time of about 586 BC. And it doesn't mean that the Jews don't have the right to exist on their land. It's just that they've been turning their back on God. So God's going to punish them. So verse 1, chapter 16. The word of the Lord came unto me, that is Jeremiah, saying... You shall not take a wife, nor have sons or daughters. For thus says the Lord concerning the sons and daughters born in this place, and concerning their mothers that bear them, and concerning the fathers that begat them in this land, they shall die of grievous deaths. They shall not be lamented, neither shall they be buried, but they shall be as dung that is fertilizer upon the face of the earth, and they shall be consumed by the sword and by famine, and their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of the heavens and for the beasts of the earth. On yet another occasion, God spoke to me and said, You must not marry and have children here. For the children born in this city and their mothers and fathers shall die of terrible diseases. No one shall mourn for them or bury them. but Their bodies shall lie on the grounds to rot and fertilize the soil. They shall die from war and from famine. And their bodies shall be picked apart by the vultures and wild animals. After giving Jeremiah a blast for his wrong attitude in the previous chapter, chapter 15, God gives him this message so he will not have to go through the agony of seeing his wife and children die before his face, before his own death. Thus God Almighty shows you protection, love and mercy for his servants. We should all take comfort from these few verses of Scripture. Well, thus says the Lord, Enter not into the houses of mourning, neither go to lament or bemoan them. For I have taken away my peace from my people, says the Lord, even my loving kindness and, and mercy. Do not want, weep or mourn for them, for I have removed my protection and peace from them, taken away my loving kindness and my mercy. If God can do that to Israel, the apparel of his eye, imagine what he can do to any other nation on earth if we turn away from his word. Both the great and the small shall die in this land. They shall not be buried, neither shall men lament for them, nor cut themselves or make themselves bald for them. Both the great and the small shall die in this land, unburied and unmourned. And their friends shall not cut themselves or shave their heads as a sign of sorrow, as is their heathen custom. So, to all those people out there who shave your heads when somebody in your family dies, it's a heathen custom. Don't do it. Neither shall men tear themselves for, for them in mourning to comfort them for the dead. Neither shall men give them the cup of consolation to drink or their father or their mother. You shall also not go into the houses of feasting that sit with them that eat and drink. No one shall comfort the mourners with a meal or send them a cup of wine expressing grief for their parents' death. This had to be a time of punishment. For thus said the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will cause to cease out of this place in your eyes and in your days, the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride. God says, I'm going to stop all that. The Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel says, in your own lifetime, before your very own eyes, I will end all laughter in this land and the happy songs, the marriage feasts, the songs of the bride and the bridegroom, they will all cease and it shall come to pass. When you shall show this people all these words, wherefore has the Lord pronounced all this evil against us? What is our iniquity? What is our sin 
that we have committed against the Lord our God. And when you tell the people all of these things and they ask you, why has the Lord decreed all of these terrible things against us? What have we done to warrant such terrible treatment? What is our sin against the Lord? Then you will say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, says the Lord, have walked after other gods, and have served them, and worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept my law. And you, that is this generation, have done worse than your fathers. For behold, you walk everyone after your own imaginations, that is the imaginations of your evil hearts, that you have not listened unto me. Therefore I will cast you out, neither you nor the fathers, and they shall serve other gods, day and night, where I will not show you favour. Now tell them the Lord's reply to this. Because your fathers turned away from me, they worshipped other gods and served them. They did not keep my laws, and they refused, and have been worse than your fathers. Your evil follows in your heart's content, and refuse to listen to me. Therefore, I will throw you out of this land, and chase you into a foreign land where neither you nor your fathers have been before. And there you shall go ahead and worship your idols as much as you like. And I will not grant you any favours. Now, for the last part of this chapter, all the scriptures re refer to the last days. So this is prophecy now. That was, that was The previous prophecy was given to the nation of Israel at the time of his living. Now it is prophecy for the future, the last days. Therefore, behold, the day shall come, said the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord lives that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Instead, the Lord lives that brought up the children of Israel and from the land of the north and from the lands wherever he has driven them. And I will bring them again into their land and I, that I gave to your father, their fathers. But there will come a glorious day, says the Lord, when the whole topic of conversation will be that of God is bringing his people home from the countries of the north where he sent them to be slaves as punishment. You will look no longer back to the time when I brought the slave out of Egypt. That mighty miracle will scarcely be mentioned anymore. Yes, I will bring you back again to this land, the same land that I promised your fathers. And we know that that promise was fulfilled. Behold, I will send forth many fishes, says the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after I send for many hunters, they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes in the rocks. Now I am sending for many fishermen to fish from the deeps where you are hiding from my anger. I'm sending forth hunters to hunt you down like deer in the forest or mountain goats in accessible crags. Wherever you run to escape my punishment, I will search and I will find you and I will punish you. For mine eyes are upon all of thy ways. They are not hidden from my face. Neither are they iniquities hidden from mine eyes. And first I will recompense their iniquity and their sins double, because they have defiled my land. They have filled my inheritance with carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. And I will punish you doubly for all of your sins, because you have defiled my land with your detestable idols and fill it up with all of your evil deeds. Notice in the Hebrew, it makes a distinction between iniquity and sin. The Oxford Dictionary says that iniquity is unrighteousness, wickedness, gross injustice, and sin is transgression against divine law or principles of morality. Notice the priority order. God always puts iniquity before sin. 
O Lord, my strength, my fortress, and my refuge in my days of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth, and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. O Lord, my strength, and my fortress, and my refuge in times of trouble, nations will come to you from around the world, saying, Our fathers have been foolish, for they have worshipped worthless idols. Shall a man make gods unto himself, and they are no gods? Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know mine hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is the Lord. Can men make God? No. The gods that they make with their own hands are not really gods at all. And when they come in that spirit, I will show them my power and my might and make them understand at last that I alone am God. And so we end chapter 16.